inside Remco Rinkma. We're in the Ivy Room once again here at the Aria. Beautiful poker room, and even more beautiful is the action that has been developing here over the last couple of days. Remco, we've seen some really amazing play from some of the highest level players in the entire world. And of course we are, because this is the first ever Poker Masters. Yeah, I know, absolutely. It's been riveting to follow the action here from the Aria in Las Vegas every single day. And, you know, the pressure is mounting as we get closer and closer to the final table in that 100K championship event. So on this show, as I'm sure Dave will get into, we have so many highlights from yesterday's action, including a lot of Phil Hellmuth blow-ups. And it was just so a, it was a sight to behold. So good. And I can't wait for what's coming today because obviously we're gonna get down to a final table. You can see it all live unfold from the last or from the first until the last hand live on Poker Go with whole cards up. So by the end of the night, you'll know who will be at the final table and who's going to be in contention for the Purple Jacket. Now, if you want to watch some of those blow-ups or maybe some of the other hands develop, you can watch it on demand as well, leading up to all of the action going live. That's the beautiful thing about Poker Go is you get over 100 days of live poker every single year, whether it's a WPT event or the World Series of Poker or something like this with Poker Masters. Once you pay that annual subscription, and by the way, you get a discount if you use our code, Masters 17, it's right down there. Uh, you get that annual pass, so you get to watch all of this poker. There's also original programming. It's all in one place for you. I'm telling you, I, I've subscribed to a lot of like the, the on-demand apps for different programming that I like. I love poker. I love poker programming. always have. And there is nothing better than Poker Go as far as specialty apps in my experience. And, all yeah, right. I guess we'll uh, let him break in because yeah. <laughs> it's Daniel Negroni. What's we, up, y'all? How are you? How you doing, man? You doing? Special yeah. guest, uh, Daniel Negreanu. What are we um, talking about? I'm like, who just burst into the room <laughs> like that? And I'm like, oh, it's Daniel Negreanu. Come on in, man. Um, so thank you for joining us, by the way. Oh, no worries. Uh, tell us about Poker Masters from your perspective, like how this has been different than many of the other events that you've played in over the years. One thing that sticks out is the caliber of play mm -hmm. is like nothing you've seen anywhere in the world ever before in history. These are clear-cut the best poker players in the world in terms of No Limit Hold'em tournaments. Uh, comparing it to 10 years ago, 20 years ago, all these guys would have just absolutely dominated. You know, the skill level's increased. It's, it's, it's fun to play, like a guy like Stefan Sottenheimer, who is like next level good, you know, plays pretty close to flawlessly, and so do so many of these guys. So it's like, I've been learning a lot the whole week, and it's different because I think everyone cares about the Purple Jacket. I'm actually, you know, as it turned out, I think part of the thing was, you know, me making all the bets and stuff, got people excited about, you know, the idea of being the Purple Jacket winner, the first ever. Yeah. Let, let's get into yesterday's action real quick. You and I talked sort of towards the end of the night, but it was an absolute riot at the table. A lot of Helmuth stuff going back and forth. You were sort of, you know, winning chips left and right, but also really enjoying it, so it seemed. So talk us through yesterday. A lot of fun, right? Because, like, I've been working on, you know, adjustments in my game and trying to improve based on things I've learned from watching these guys and other things I've done, you know, at home. So it's fun to put it into practice and see, you know, what's effective, what's not. And it's also just always a blast to play with Phil Hellmuth. And just listening to Phil, like, I'm just going to say this. I love Phil. He's a good person with the table, but he's completely delusional. <laughs> like, just completely de like, he's looking at Stefan Sondheimer and thinking he's, some, he's one of the kids, you know? Like, all these kids. He has them booked. They're all the same, right? They're all the, just the kids, right? The kids with the math. It's like, Stefan Sondheimer does everything well. So does Fader Holt. So does all these guys, you know? And when Phil says at the table something like, I wish I could play with you guys every day. Their answer and the, what their first thought is like, please, <laughs> yeah. please, mommy, can this happen? Like, he, if, and I think it holds Phil back because until he's able to like humble himself enough to the point where he realizes the game has changed and evolved and you have to learn what they've learned, if you're not willing to do that and open to that and you think you can just white magic them, you'll never be able to beat them. I mean, not to say that he could even if he did do the study or not to say that I could, but um, it's, it's essential today. To be at the highest level, you have to study a great deal and it's complex well you mentioned that you've learned a lot throughout the course of this tournament C can you isolate one thing what's something that playing with all of these other amazing talents that you've said yeah. you know what this is a part of my game that maybe i got to tweak a little bit here i think like when you look at a guy like we'll use stefan as an example stefan is a guy who uh, in real time can just say like you know he understands like well you have more seven eights than i do he can break down combos of bluffs versus combos of value bets in real time within 30 seconds and know that, okay, in this spot, he's supposed to bluff. So he's not afraid. He's got no fear because he knows he's making the right play. So there's no sense of, like, fear. Like the big bluff against me, you know, he's like, okay, well, he knew in his range he's got more king-queens than I ever have, and I never have king-queen. And, uh, my, you know, he just figured it out rather, rather quickly, and he's, he's basing his plays based on, like, his range versus your range and doing it flawlessly because he's, you know, got so much practice with it. So just learning how to think about hands differently in a more advanced way 
just from talking to them and, and watching them play. We have a huge bubble coming up today and, and getting down to the final table and ultimately tomorrow playing for that huge first prize, which really can shake up the sort of jacket race in, in, in a very extreme way. Um, how much has that been in your mind over these last few hours getting into today? And then also, you know, all the prop betting action has been very, very big. And, and now it all comes down to these last two days. Yeah, obviously, I'm not going to do anything different, right? Because we're talking about 1.5, 1.6 million for first. Whether it's 1.5 or 2.5 for me, I'm still going to pretty much play uh, the same style and, 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 you know, do the best that I can. Uh, Stefan has a big stack as well right now. He's really the only threat outside of maybe a Fedor where if I win and one of them, like, comes second or third. Like, if, if, Se if Stefan comes in third, he most, most, for the most part, locks it up unless Fedor wins, which is, which is deserving because the guy's got a first, a fourth, a fifth, and he also came eighth where he bubbled, <laughs> right? So he's, like, the worst finish he's had is an eighth. So for him, if he, f if he were to finish, like, third in this thing and not win the Purple Jacket, it would seem unfair. Now, me. Poker Mass is broken into two very distinct parts. It's the 50K buy-in preliminary events over a number of days, and then we get into the 100K championship, and this is what we're going to see, the, the second day of feature table action in the 100K event. But w when you compare the two different uh, 50Ks versus the 100K here, how would you say that this, the 100K, benefits you more, if you think it does, compared to the 50K preliminary events? Well, the, the one key difference, of course, is with the 50Ks, the structure is much faster. You're mm -hmm. looking at 30-minute levels versus 60-minute levels. You're looking at 125K in starting stack versus 200K in starting chips. So for me, you know, each of the first four days, I've been doing really, really well to chip up, right? And then, you know, it kind of gets down to that race period, and I've been really unlucky for the most part in those in those four 50Ks. So the 60-minute levels and the more chips allows me a little bit more play. It's basically going to make it a much more skill-based event. It makes it that much harder for uh, a recreational or, like, a novice player to win. Um makes it harder for me to win, frankly, too, because, like, I'm not one of the favorites in this thing. There's better players in this tournament than myself. So, you know, luck would, like, be something that I would, I would like. But having said that, I love the idea of playing in the streets with the best and just, like, putting it all on the line there and just to see where I'm at. You know, in 2004, 2005, I was the best in the world at tournaments for sure. I, I'm not – this wasn't just based on results. I was doing things that was way ahead of my time. That's not the case right now. The case right now is you have a young group of players who are simply better. They've worked the up the math in a lot more progressive way, and that's fun for me to Do look at. Do you feel like you're behind, though? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, listen, I th I've gotten a lot better in the last four or five months, but there's still so much I need to learn, right? When just listening to them talk about hands and how quick they are to understand, like, what your range is in that spot based on, you know, all these. They're just really, really good. So, you know, I think in order to improve in, as a poker player, you have to humble yourself and realize, like, where are you at? If you just always think you're the best and that never is going to change without, without doing any work, you're never going to be, right? It really takes uh, an honest look at where you're at and um, – from that point, thinking about what do I got to work on? It, it's, I mean, we're going to have to let you go soon because play is about to start, but how I is it fun and or how fun is it to see these new guys come up seemingly out of nowhere for the public eye, someone like Sondheimer, and then in the past, you know, we've seen Coleman do this, we've seen Fader Holtz do this, we've seen Sam Trickett do this e like a, a while back. How fun is that for you as a player who's been around for such a long time seeing these sort of guys come out of nowhere establish themselves and then be names for years to come and i feel like this is like the sondheimer moment where his name is sort of you know now a part of that conversation yeah. for years to come we talk about things that are like good for poker it's always good for poker when like a new hot star comes onto the scene and i'm always excited about it i'm always excited about every new movement i mean for the last 20 years you know i've been hearing that i'm done and i can't win anymore for like 20 years now uh, because like the new generation is too good right um i've always been able to learn quickly and adapt quickly um this is going to be one of the more tough tasks because the game has really gotten to a point now where it's i wouldn't say it's no anywhere near solved but the players are, are that much better but seeing a guy like stefan and the young germans and their approach to the game and how dedicated they are and i think another thing one of the things that phil misses out on is like these are not just math guys these are guys who are studying body language. They're focused in. I, I know that now. So, like, I'm actually being a lot more wary about what I'm giving off in terms of tells because they're the combination of a poker player. These aren't just, like, math nerds who figured out GTO. These are guys who are, like, looking into your soul, if you will, <laughs> and, uh, and they're good at it. All right, we're going to kick you out because you're going okay. to can't miss any work. Real quickly, Kimberly said you're such an inspiration. Nice to see such honest, uh, honesty. Go, Daniel. And congrats, Daniel. You're an idol. You're the best. So Thanks, people are guys. rooting for you. Thanks Appreciate for stopping it. by I'm today. I'm do my best. Right. Got to get lucky. <laughs> If you want to watch Daniel play today, of course, over on Poker Go is where all the action is going down. And, yes, it is going to be starting very soon. If you haven't subscribed yet, very simple. There is a link right below us. Just click that. Use our code MASTER17. You'll get a discount on that annual pack. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back, Remco, we're going to get into some of this action that we've been talking about because yesterday, as you'd expect, fireworks at the table. This is the Poker Go pre-show. We're coming right back.
Who's got the nuts here? That's oh nuts. boy! Wow, you flopped it, Dennis. He's played uh, right, two I'm or three one drops. Cool. I got yeah. it. You have it. You flopped it. Oh, oh my God! Did you try, did you try <laughs> that that's so that's yeah. just, like so great. I mean, what am I gonna do? It's like. the jacket actually being the trophy, it's important that it not just be something that looks like fast fashion or looks like something that is like, you know, in vogue now, but like if I'm a winner in 2029, I should still say, wow, I may actually take that out of the case one day and actually wear that. It's that important to like create something that's that timeless. It has to be something that when you put it on, it's like, wow, this is really elegant. Like when people think of the best things that winners in sporting events receive, it'd be great for them to mention this jacket. That to me is like, there's no better story than that. Welcome back. It's the Poker Go Free Show. It's great to be with you today. We are in the Ivy Room here at the RE in Las Vegas. And Poker Masters once again underway. Uh, play is starting here at the bottom of the hour. So just about 25 minutes away, you can watch this once again unfold live exclusively on Poker Go. And Poker Masters is just one of the many offerings that Poker Central and Poker Go brings you. You can watch this series wrap up. And then coming up a little bit later this week, there's going to be a WPT final table. There's original programming like Major Wager that just got released. And of course, Poker After dark which has been a staple in all of our all of our lives as poker fans for a long time is now back with brand new episodes as well so and again, let me interrupt you yes. right there omaha is coming to poker after yeah. dark next week uh just it's next week it's already here next week and, wow. the, and the next week we'll have we'll have omaha and poker after dark so stay tuned for that it's gonna be 100k buy-in 300 600 blinds uh a good cast of characters you guys won't be disappointed so a nice starter game if you will yeah, yeah it's yeah. like entry level stuff yeah yeah <laughs> All right, so here we go. We were talking about some of the action that was developing at the, the feature table yesterday. We are now in the 100K buy-in uh, championship event for Poker Masters. And so these are the biggest names. And as Daniel just mentioned here on the show, it's the best play that he's ever encountered uh, over his many years of competing all around the world. So as you would expect, fireworks at the table. To start us off here, Daniel Negreanu involved in a monster hand. On a four to one shot. shot. I spent the last 48 hours in or three to one shot if they're forehanded. This could be a function of that loose German rep. Yeah, Daniel getting a little feisty. Three betting to 27 5 over the top of Karai's. Open to 7K. Four bet here will surely take it down. Looks like he's just going to call, though. Cool. And he does. You know, I favor the flat more with the kings and aces. The jacks a little bit more vulnerable, vulnerable. Until, of course, they flop sets. And but this. not so quick. Negrano's got the open-ended straight draw and control of the betting. Out of position. Heads up with Aldemir. 61K in the middle. And their stacks are huge. Aldemir's third in chips. He's got... Above average with 414,000. The fuse is lit. Daniel again with what's called the weak lead. When you bet that small bet into the large pot, just 16,000. And all the mirror just calls. Yeah. No flush draws out there to worry about. Middle set, such a huge holding. And you can't imagine your opponent three bet you out of position with the queen 10. So your only thing that could really feasibly be beating you at this hand is three kings. Everything else is either behind you crushed, and there's no real draws to worry about. And so now a, an offsuit deuce on the turn is such an incredibly safe card that one could foresee Daniel continuing his line as he measures out what looks like 45K, just shy of half the pot for the second bullet. And could Aldemir continue to suckle? 
Well, again, there's no real draw. Your opponent could feasibly have, other than maybe queen ten or nine ten, but you know it's not likely is what you're thinking if you're Aldemir. Yeah, so you just call, give him some rope. Totally understand this choice by Karai. And now the river. Oh my goodness. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Kid Poker is blessed. How big will this pot get is the question. Aldemir with 326,000 behind, so a little less than twice pot. Likely discounting the straight cards. So it's does my opponent have two kings or does he have two eights, two nines, ace king? All those hands he's beating other than the two kings. about a flat call or a raise or just determining how much he's going to raise? Well, I think if he's going to raise, it's going to be at all. If he <clears throat> if he decides to raise. Because he would only have 200 back after the call, so. All in. All in. All in. All in. Wow. Who Daniel. could have imagined a pot this massive? Daniel wins the pot. <laughs> what does he have? <laughs> the stones. Okay. Daniel up over a million chips. And that was one of the hands that led to Daniel Negreanu being one of our chip leaders as this event rolls on. It's the 100K event, and Daniel Negreanu has had some nice moments for him. He was talking earlier about how, you know, in the preliminary events where it's 50K, you're shorter stacked, the levels move quicker. There is some luck that you're relying on, but they you're in some key spots. It can really damage your ability to, to move forward and make those final tables. Th would you say that the 100K event is much more suited for Daniel's style of play? It, it, it's very hard to pinpoint what it that is exactly is that sort of benefits one player or another. But the one thing that goes without saying is that when you have more patience, you can also sit back more. But if we look at how yesterday's play went, they played so many enormous pots that it might as well have been a turbo because the average stack right now is around 100 big blinds, which is an indication of how fast they played because you know a lot of players got knocked out in big pots. So for this stretch of tournaments, I think that variance was on Daniel's side. You know him hitting that straight on the river against Corey really changes everything. And right now he has a really good stack going into today. Uh, but obviously, you know, other players also benefit from benefit from the slower structure because they also have more time to wait for for the good spots. So uh, I think this this works both ways, and Daniel just picked the right tournament to do well in. Well, and, and Daniel did call out a few minutes ago when he was here on the Poker Girl pre-show that he really enjoys sitting down at the table when Phil Hellmuth is across from him. And I think certainly as a viewer, I know that I enjoy it because there's going to be fireworks, and sure enough, you'll see some of that here. Wow, that was that was some real cowardice right there. Stephen, that was, that was don't, don't let the friends mm -hmm. see that. That was what we call cowardice. That was mm -hmm. cowardice. Cowardice, cowardice means you, you, you can call raise it. With it, it means that it was, was a very easy river race. I thought he was trapping me, you know? That was a very easy river race. He called yeah. the race with Queen 8 suited when I raced under the gun. What do you mean cowardice? Cowardice. That's not cowardice. I have another word for it. <laughs> just, make it just make it 60. Oh, I mean, was thought a, about it. <laughs> Oh, man, that was such a make it <laughs> right there. I mean, I did snap call. I know. Maria, I David, and myself actively <laughs> monitoring the Twitter streams for the handful of you who I mean, might still be awake at this wee little. hour. <laughs> been good on the West or East Coast, school night, midnight to 3 a.m. across the country. Raise and then the fireworks. Scott Sieber with a real yeah. hand. <laughs> I know, but I was too scared of the King Queen. This is an insomniac <laughs> yeah. dream. It's oh, right. infomercials or us. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's the one hand. You still got the late night talk show. That's what I'm talking if you're on the about. West Coast for a little bit. Five yeah. days against me. You called in every spot where you could never have the best hand, and you won them all. So far. You're running good. I hope in Europe the Queen 8s stop working for you. <laughs> <laughs> Queen 8 with you. I feeling like it could be this. Ooh, at least I made a move with it. <laughs> and the other guy did have 8 Why high. Why did you bet the club? You had nothing. Yeah. King high. King Jack high against you. Oh, oh, wow. That's not even a bluff. You defend so light. You could have Jack 8 suited there, right? Yeah, but I have Scott behind. I can't call my shit. Scott would have moved in with an ace there. Felt like an easy bet on the club. Especially against you. Ace eighty five hundred. God damn it. Eighty five thousand. Thanks. Can't beat fucking Queen Eight. Can't beat any of this fucking. <laughs> but you're gonna keep trying to give it to me, and I'm just gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna be like, a rock, like a fourteen time world champion of poker. <laughs> <laughs> gonna keep showing you the nuts over and over and over, and firing and firing and firing. If and eventually, often, eventually the deuce four. No, I mean, no, you call so light all the time. Eventually, you're going to get punished. Look <laughs> like at Rass. He's just party. like, I've heard this for the last 15 years of my life. Good. You serious? Again? You better enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Good job. Seaver's bet draws the curtain on that pot. Enjoy it while it lasts, kid. Are you predicting you're going to get me today, or did you wait till tomorrow? I got two more hours after that. I don't have a control. You're the one who can control it. <laughs> I think I give you the chance to get me today at least. <laughs> I think you will. I really yeah, do. It's the best. It's just the best. <laughs> I busted all these other guys so many times, everybody in the world, all the great players, that they just don't try to give me stacks like you do. They understand, you know, hey, maybe I should wait for the next 10. I would like to see your power ranking for great You ever been busted by Phil Helmuth? No. <laughs> And I'm almost glad I've never I'll busted him because he takes it pretty personally. Oh, it's just fantastic. I'll bet you have a clearer view of who the great players are than you guys. You guys walk, yeah, walk you guys travel around the world, 25 people playing every high roller, and then all of a sudden you somehow have my record of most money won in poker tournaments. Why? Because you play 40 high rollers in a year and you pass the money back and forth. And most of you have like 10% of yourself anyway. It's ridiculous. Ooh. I hate that. Bang, bang. So if you want to bring up rankings, don't talk to me. <laughs> I mean, I'll just destroy it. Numbers, wait, 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 guys, does I mean, Daniel, should, I, should I get into this or not? Should does I, Daniel yes. have a little Yeah, get into it. How, how much of yourself <laughs> do you have <laughs> in this film? <laughs> if we're being a stickler for $20. dollar amounts. I never claim differently. So then you can't Although say these kids with 10 How close is Eric? Eric's close, right? A few million behind. I play about four tournaments a year. Maybe five. I'll take the over. I'm on those rankings. You did well. You, you I'm did not that comment. like the last two years. This year you're a little. You're over four, right? This year. I didn't even want to put not two really. in. Hmm? I didn't want to put nope. two in, but I felt wimpy. I told haven't me. done an EPT <laughs> in two years. Yeah. Any of them? That's not the high end. Level. You might be more. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I played. I played like yeah. four twenty-five four, games four, here. Four, four, three. Yeah. yeah. Six yeah. Six the whole year. I could have, yeah. You didn't play. You haven't played many of them. Three or four total. Seaver has been playing predominantly cash games of late. Yeah, you can tell I'm mad. I'm mad about the, uh, I'm mad about the money list. <coughs> it's definitely flawed. You do have three people in front of you on the list out of the four others at this table. Well, <laughs> it's possible, Daniel. Daniel and I've had this discussion. I'm not. I don't think I'm in front of Phil yet. You're not in front of Phil. It's, it's probably out. like within the next year. Me neither. I started pretty late. So yeah, late. you started very late. <laughs> I, mean, I think I'm less than a mil behind. Unless I play a bunch and just ne never cash again. I'm not sure when you know, but they are 1.6 million first in this one. I just let you take my big blind every time, Phil. I've learned. I, I, I see. I'm kind of steamed up because if uh, Stefan's there, then he has. He's going to call with a 9-6 every fucking time. <laughs> that was time. literal. The literal worst <laughs> hand I could have been against. I'm steamed up a little bit. I should have raised less. Number one. Put you on the A couple of our international viewers pointing out that. Well, we think everyone is sleeping. That right there 
as you would imagine, is highlights from yesterday. That was all going down on the feature table yesterday. Previously, as the Poker Masters have been rolling on, it's been the final table that we've been showing you for the 50K preliminary events. Obviously, this 100K event is a three-day event, so we have a feature table each day. And Remco, we don't have a whole lot of players left. We basically have two tables of players, and that's it in this 100K event. Yeah, we're down to 14 players as of right now. We'll have one more player. You know, this is like a little bit of a hot news item. One more player coming in. His name is Byron Caberman, very accomplished player, former uh, GPI player of the year winner he is the last player to enter uh, bringing the total field to 36 so we'll see him also participate it'll be his first event at the poker masters uh, he could not be here for the first week but he still managed to make it out here for the 100k uh, but like you said we're down to a very very small field only six places will get paid they're going to get down to a final table of seven today uh, so even though it looks like we're close to the end this is when it gets really, really exciting and the adrenaline starts pumping for all these players because every single hand can make the difference between them having a chance to win over a million dollars or to be at the bar. As Daniel said, he's playing against some of the, the, the best players that he's ever competed against. In fact, he called this the best field of poker that he's ever competed in, which I think is really uh, quite a statement from Daniel Negreanu. And even when you have seven deuce, can one of these players turn the dreaded seven deuce into a hand that wins? Here's Dan Shack. Let's take a look. You should call something. So 65. Yeah, so. Go, Dan Shack. Get him. It's usually going to be, I would assume, pretty polarizing that spot. But I don't just bet. But he won't be charged a time extension for this. Right. So makes, when I bet makes it, it tough for you to call stuff. But yeah. you find an object 10, king 10 jams. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's Tell me, I really would have liked to see a flop here. But it's tough to not raise. And you're just beaten by received okay. four combinations and other yeah. things. Such a I big three bet. I think you have to adjust the tendencies, right? I don't, you know the player. Brass wants to see a flop so yeah. bad. Yeah, sure. Both oh of them my did. God. What did he show? Seven wow. deuce? Yeah. He showed it? Wow. Damn, Shaq showed it. <laughs> yeah, Shaq attack yeah. voice. We were playing last night at Ari and we were playing the seven deuce game. So now you're just going to go <laughs> So I figured I'd play it one more. Oh. Didn't work out yesterday. Worked out okay. Uh, this, feels right, like, yeah. this feels like the old days. Really. That, was, bluff, my, bluff, 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 that was for my friends in the game last night. <laughs> and king, queen of hearts. Wow. They have to pay you, pay you now? That would be great. They, I'd get 300 more as far as <laughs> from winning the hand. Just remember that for oh. later. Okay. Well, I'm not you always it. complain to it me. Was only because Just I had, remember. It was only because I had seven Just deuce. Remember. So I'm not going to do that with like Jack Flea or No, that's not King it. You got to do seven deuce. Seven deuce. You got to do it. <laughs> you just got to do it. I almost <laughs> sex filled the hand before the break with seven deuce. It was so close. So close. <laughs> but he got the reads. What can I do? Yeah. Oh, it just feels like so cold. It just feels it's, like the old days. It's the so. only time where I it got It is the old. And there you have it, more action from day number one and then some screen, I have no idea what that meant. But anyway, we're back to it here. We have more highlights to show you. Actually, just one more to go. And w when you see these players, they're going up against their peers that they greatly respect. You know, they, they have to be strategic about, of course, how they're going to play their hands, and they have to make strategic bluffs. Sometimes, though, Remco, you get your hand caught <laughs> in the cookie jar. It is so funny to see like Shaq pull it off here with the seven deuce and showing us cards. It's just... Such a funny thing that doesn't really fit into this tournament because you know everybody's all about the GTO play and trying to adjust. You know, Dan Shack throws some street poker in there and just gets away with it and shows the seven deuce. And as you could tell, it really livens up the table. It livens up the table talk. And that is one of the biggest takeaways for me uh, being around the play here for the last couple of days. How casual the atmosphere is despite the fact that they're playing for millions of dollars and at the same time competing against the best in the world. And it's good to see there's still room for a bit of banter, a bit of back and forth, and some, some good old seven deuce bluffing. Yeah, we actually saw Daniel earlier. He was the one that was leading out with a straight. He needed a, a nine in order to make that straight, so he had the gut shot. Ended up going up against a set of jacks, and then on the river made that straight, so he got lucky there. Phil Helmuth tried to make a play against Brian Rast, and things didn't go quite so well for him. Have a look. Pick on this big blind. And Rast calls the extra 24. Eight, check. five, deuce. Rast flopping middle pair. Quick check from Helmuth here. As he's bloated this thing pre-flop up to 74,000. 
Rast checks back. Turn is a nine. Phil picks up a gunshot straight draw. 45. Bets 45,000 and look at that steely gaze across the table. Being shot right back at him. Wow. Rast calls the wow. 45,000. Got a big pot on our hands here and a four on the end. Third diamond. Another big bullet. He's only got 106,000 left. Fire. The pot has 164. You pretty much have to bet it all. How amazing would this be? Don't wave the white flag of surrender. Of course, I can see the cards. Yeah, but how many times have you ever heard of Helmut? 66,000. He does it. 66,000. Lifeline that bust out and might look him up. Because he's going to say, Why did he bet not all of it? Or could it look too much like value? I just think that if you did have the hand you have with Rip is representing and you want to get paid, you want to get it all doubled. It's weird to me that Helmuth is actually looking over at Rast. When the action is on Rast, he's the one that's got to make the call here. I think he's going to call. Here comes the gun. I think he's going to call. I think if Helmuth bombed it in, he has a better shot of succeeding just because it's more. And it, people know Helmuth doesn't want to put his tournament life on the line which is kind of a reason why he might make this fishy bet. I think Rask is going to sniff this out. He's going to burn another time extension well, here. They get new ones tomorrow, so if you're going to use them, you might as well use them at the end of the night. Can't, you can't combine them and save them. This is really just a bluff catcher. A pair of fives. Cue the meltdown. Brian Rast, he is incredible. Curia67 on YouTube said, hey, uh, what is this? Is this a recap or is this today? Now, this is a recap from yesterday, Remco. So lots of great action went down yesterday and starting on Poker Go here in just a couple of minutes, actually. About four minutes from now, the bottom of the hour, all new action from today. We have another feature table that is set to go, and it is slim pickings at this point. Poker Masters 100K Championship event is what we're in the middle of right now, and there's only 14 players that remain in the tournament as of right now. Uh, Curia also said, shout out to Remco. Much love, man. Love your podcast. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Every, everyone who's watching right now, search for <laughs> Poker Central Podcast on your favorite podcasting app. Yep. You can listen to that every week. Despite my, my strong distaste for Remco as a person, his podcast is quite fun. Exactly. Sure you don't have to like me. Just yeah. like the podcast. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into exactly how things have developed. Because, you know, c coming into the, the 100K event, uh, Nick Shulman had some success in the, in the prelims. So we were thinking, hey, maybe he's going to have a real run of this jacket. Uh, turns out, no, actually. Uh, Ten minutes of play, basically, in the 100K event. And then he was out. It was a set over set for him. Uh, Scott Siever got the best of him there. But very quick action. We've actually seen a number of fast eliminations in this 100K. K buy-in championship event. Yeah, a lot of the top players from this week's 50K events 
really <laughs> hit the hit the exit pretty fast. Uh, you mentioned Shulman, who of course mm -hmm. uh, was the first one to get eliminated, but also uh, Brian Kenny, one of the top performers, also eliminated. He won one of the events, uh, and then additionally Brandon Adams winning uh, the last event before the 100K started. He got eliminated running his aces into kings. And then Doug Polk has a straight. He runs into a flush. It's just been. I mean, they've been big hands on both sides in almost every one of these scenarios. But, you know, you think you're, you're playing seven-handed. You're feeling pretty good about things. Everyone's playing tight because it's 100K by an event early on. And then that's just not the case. I mean, next thing you know, like you said, big names who did really well in the prelims hitting the door. Yeah, it's funny. Like, you see a lot of big names get knocked out. And then you look back at the chip counts and you're like, wait, there's still so many big names remaining. Yep. And that's because there's only big names in this tournament. So it's kind of one of those things where if it goes in the reverse order, we're still talking about a tournament with all the big names. So it's crazy to think that you know you can lose all those high-caliber players and still be uh, left with a lot of high-caliber players. Um, as we're looking at the leaderboard right now, I mean, you can just tell by looking at these names that today is going to be a feast for the poker fan. It's watching, a It's a veritable who's who of yeah. the poker. This is awesome to watch. If you're a big fan of poker, uh, even, even if you're a casual fan of poker, you almost certainly know who at least a handful of these guys are because these are the biggest names in the business. Business. Yeah, one, one of the names that I want to highlight here is uh, Seth Davies, who is uh, one of the more unknown players in the tournament today. Um, uh, I'm not too familiar with Seth Davies myself. However, when I saw him yesterday, I sort of nudged Jason Kuhn and I said, Jason, who's, who's the guy in seed one? And he looks at me and he goes, he's an absolute killer. So this guy might not be the most known player, but he probably plays in some of the highest stakes games all around the world. And, you know, starting at 100K, he is willing to get out of bet for, uh, but he skipped the 50Ks to just play in this one. Uh, but, yeah, Brian Rass leading the way, followed by Bonomo, Negreanu, and then Sondheimer. Sondheimer is the one person that actually won himself one of the prelims that still remains here in the 100K event. Yeah, absolutely. Sondheimer is the large favorite for the Purple Jacket. He needs much, much less than a win in order to lock it up, depending on who makes it to the final table. Uh, but the first few hours today will be very, very interesting uh, as we get closer and closer to that final table. Yeah, and looking at, at some of the short stacks coming into this, so uh, Stephen Chidwick and Phil Helmuth both on short stacks, Dan Shack with less than a quarter million chips to go, and Christian Christner at 377. Yeah, no. So those guys have some work to do. Those guys have a lot of work to do. Also, Byron Caverman is, is entering today. He's starting with a fresh 200,000 uh, chip stack. Considering how deep we still are in the tournament, big blinds wise, uh, that is still a very you know workable stack. For for him, uh, but we're obviously going to see a lot of play and a lot of pressure from the big stacks since we have a uh, payout bubble uh, with seven players remaining. So it's going to take a fairly long time before we get to that point, but we're going to get a lot of pressure from the players. So as you can hear, the broadcast is getting underway right now <laughs> over on Poker Go. Real quickly, Remco, what, how much do we know about today's feature table? Who's going to be sitting there and playing? So at the feature table, at the start of today, we're going to have uh, Dan Smith, Jake Schindler, Stefan Sondheimer, he, of course, is the one in pole position. Uh, then Brian Rast, Fader Holtz, Phil Helmuth on the short stack, and the aforementioned Seth Davies. So keep an eye out for Seth Davies. I'm going to look closely at how he's playing. I've never seen him play on TV before, so that's going to be exciting to watch. And, um, you know, don't pay attention to his beard. He has a really good beard. The party is starting over on Poker Go right now. Go subscribe if you haven't yet. It's very much worth the subscription. Just basically a cup of coffee every single month. Use our promo code MASTER17 to get a discount. Alongside Remco Renkma, my name's Dave Fair. Thank you for being with us for the Poker Go pre-show.